I am Captain Spawn, and this is day 318 of Spawn Year. I can somewhat relate to the disabled kid in this story, doomed to live out his days isolated in a bubble because the slightest amount of bacteria would kill him. He spent all his time honing his drawing skills, dreaming of one day having some feeling of relevance, affecting the outside world in any way at all. In fact, reading about someone who, through no fault of his own, has had it that tough, it makes my problems look insignificant by comparison. I too am cut off from the outside world and am trapped in a small space with little to tantalize the senses. Very little. I may never see my wife or my child or anyone again. I may already be a memory. Or I may be the deciding factor in an ongoing cosmic struggle between the supreme forces of Coke and Pepsi and the fate of the universe may riot on my winning a single grudge match against the emissary of Coke, but I highly doubt it. Not only do I stand at least some chance of emerging triumphant, not only was I not born into this predicament in the first place, but I did, to at least some degree, bring this unfathomable existence upon myself. This boy, Kenneth, was simply dealt a rotten hand at birth. Now that certainly doesn't condone a mystical, jealous murder spree any more than my workloads and deadlines condone the way I treated Doomsvents when we first arrived. But Hein does a decent job of exploring the theme of personal insignificance here, albeit in that twisted and over-the-top way I'd expect from a Spawn comic. At the risk of approaching this in a meta sort of fashion, I wonder if, by comparing Kenneth and Spawn's feelings of irrelevance, Hein isn't struggling with trying to find some sort of purpose for the book itself. Kenneth suggests, having learned about Spawn from Amon, that now that Spawn has restored the world, there's nothing left for him. There's no more left for him than there is for Kenneth. Both are cut off, observers who are too grotesque and inhuman in their respective way to be a part of society. He says, don't you wish you could just die? This book has struggled forever to definitively decide who and what Al Simmons is, whether he's a hero, an anti-hero, or something else entirely, even to decide what sort of book it wants to be. And after finally resorting to destroying the world and starting over, and still having no more clear direction for Spawn than before, it reads as if the book itself is questioning the validity of its own existence. It's about time. The first step in getting help is to admit you have a problem. The really sad part, though, is at any time, Hein or whoever's writing could just move away from origin, move away from mythology, use the Hellspawn mythos as a foundation, just a basic premise, and let Spawn, with an established ideology and point of view, go have adventures, get into trouble, affect the world. It could be superhero stuff, it could be detective stuff, it could be horror stuff, whatever. Spawn is like Kenneth in that he can't have a normal life. But he isn't isolated, nor does he have any reason to hide from the world. In fact, now he lives in a world that remembers Armageddon. A detective in this issue recognizes Spawn as the man who saved the world. I have never before seen a status quo in which it would be easier for someone to declare himself a superhero and stop crimes and disasters unfettered by an untrusting public. Spawn at this point could probably get parades in his name or the key to the city. If I were Spawn, I'd quit sulking and get as close as I could to becoming the Adventures of Spawn version of myself. Besides the stray demons and angels, which, by the way, the world does need Spawn to take care of, there hasn't been much crime. With Spawn's help, it could stay way more peaceful. But instead of making the best of the world he made, thinking he could go back to Wanda, Spawn lets Maman really obviously manipulate him into deciding by the final page and after Kenneth kills one more mango winner and goes outside to enjoy the sun before the air kills him, that everything he touches turns rotten, and it's time for him to die. And it comes out of nowhere. Maman shows up as one of Kenneth's shape-shifting manifestations and symbolically melts to drive that point home for Spawn. Yeah, he couldn't get to the victims before they died, but isn't that what Spawn wanted, to not be omnipotent? 
to not play Gon. This is one of the rare instances where Spawn didn't make a situation worse. He can help make his existence about setting a heroic example, and people still have free will. So now he's better than Maman. But because Hind wants Spawn in a suicidal depression, he snaps his fingers and boom, we've set up 185. It's pretty easy to be a master manipulator when everyone in the universe is this stupid. Spawn asks Maman what he wants from him, and Maman says nothing, just for Spawn to see how worthless he is now. How can Spawn not see that this was his convoluted plot all along, to make Spawn suicidal so he's distracted, and Maman can do whatever it is he wants to do now. I've been fuzzy on his M.O. since the Throne to Heaven disappeared. Spawn's got Daffy Duck logic all of a sudden. Kenneth's powers are contrived. Something happened to him during Armageddon. Really, that's all we get. We're told, something happened, then Maman taught him how to use his powers. Even still, I can kinda relate to him at least on some level. Spawn, I got no sympathy for. Signed, Captain Spawn. <laughs>